Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. First, have you downloaded your free copy of our children's illustrated biography of African legends yet? Please do so if you haven't. Don't forget that we owe our children a responsibility to expose them to our history. Also, please help us to continue bringing you videos like this one by supporting us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Please subscribe, share and like our videos. In November 1946, hair salon owner Viola Desmond went to the Roseland Theatre in New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, Canada <clears throat> to watch a movie. When she got there, she chose a main floor seat and refused to move to the balcony where black people were expected to sit. She was arrested and dragged out of the theater. Viola Desmond refused to accept the charges against her and her case went all the way to Nova Scotia's Supreme Court. So who was this woman who years before Rosa Parks chose to oppose segregation? in Canada. Viola Desmond was born in 1914 in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Her parents were highly regarded within the black community in Halifax. Her father, James Albert Davis, worked for several years as a stevedore before establishing himself as a barber. At a time when interracial marriage was rare, Viola's mother, Gwendolyn Irene Davis, née Johnson, was the daughter of a white minister and his wife, who had moved to Halifax from New Haven, Connecticut. Viola's parents were well integrated into the black community and became active and prominent members of various community organizations. Viola Desmond was brought up in a large family. She had 10 siblings. Motivated by her parents' example of hard work and community involvement, Desmond aspired to success as an independent businesswoman. Growing up, she dreamed of opening a beauty salon. But beauty schools in Nova Scotia did not accept black students. After a short period, teaching in two racially segregated schools for black students, she registered for a program of study at the Field Beauty Culture School in Montreal. One of the few such institutions in Canada at that time that accepted uh, black applicants, uh, the Field Beauty uh, Culture School was one of those very few uh, schools that accepted black students at that time. She then proceeded for further training in Atlantic City and in New York before opening Vice Studio of Beauty Culture in Halifax, catering to black uh, the black community. She went on to become a successful entrepreneur operating a beauty school as well as her own salon. She was also ahead of her time in recognizing an underserved market. And so she created a line of cosmetics for people with darker complexions. Despite her many accomplishments, Desmond still had to contend with the racist practices of segregation. Although in Canada, there were no official laws enforcing separa uh, separation of blacks, uh, black and white people, white communities and businesses, shops, theaters, and restaurants made their own unofficial rules. As a matter of fact, before Viola Desmond stayed her sitting at the Roseland Theater, Carrie M. Best, 
the founder and editor of the Clarion, the first black-owned newspaper in Nova Scotia, had actually done a similar thing. In December 1941, Carrie Best heard that teenage girls had been removed by force from the Roseland Theater for sitting in the whites only section. She then decided to visit her, the theater with her son and sat there. Best and her son were arrested and charged with disturbing the peace. Although Best filed a civil lawsuit against the theater for racial discrimination, the theater owner's right to exclude anyone won over the bigger issue of racism in, in, in the court. In other words, the court decided that owners had the right to exclude service to anyone that they didn't want to serve rather than, you know, find them guilty of, uh, of racism. Similarly, when Desmond was removed from the theater for sitting in a whites-only section, existing laws were used to sanction her for breaking the unwritten rules of segregation. Viola Desmond was charged with tax evasion for failing to pay the full tax on a main floor movie ticket. A difference that amounted to only one cent. By refusing to change seats and by fighting her conviction in court, Viola Desmond directly challenged segregation in Canada. She recognized that what had happened to her was an injustice and she chose to use her power to speak up against it. Even though she ultimately lost her appeal, her stand against injustice galvanized Nova Scotia's black community and helped inspire Canada's civil rights movement. Unfortunately, the personal cost for Desmond was high. Her marriage ended and she had to abandon her business in Nova Scotia and move to uh, Montreal. She passed away on the 7th of February, 1965, in New York City. The miscarriage of justice in Desmond's case was officially recognized in 2010 when the Lieutenant Governor of uh, Nova Scotia, May Ann Francis, the first black Nova Scotian to serve in that position, pardoned her posthumously and removed her conviction from the historical uh, record. In 2018, Mrs. Viola Desmond became the first Canadian woman featured on a regularly circulating Canadian $10 bill. Desmond has also appeared on, uh, on a Canadian uh, postage stamp. Thanks for watching. Please download your free copy of our children's books and support us through Patreon or by buying me coffee. Also, tell your friends about this channel. Thank you.